Welcome back to the next episode in the Intro to Reloading series. But first, before we get started, I need to give a huge thank you and welcome to all my new subscribers. In the past month, the channel has grown by over 11,000 subscribers, so I'm sure there's a lot of new viewers watching this video. Just as a tip for all you new guys, I include timestamps and video chapters down in the description, so you're welcome to skip through the video as you like. Also, if you like the content and learn something from today's video, please smash that like button. It only takes a couple seconds and helps tell the algorithm that this video is worth seeing for other reloaders here on YouTube. With that being said, on to today's video. In this episode, we're going to cover powder charging, load development, and proper safety procedures when dealing with proper powder charges. Stay tuned, we're going to get into it. When introducing powder into the reloading process, there are a couple things that you're going to need to have on hand. The first of which, you're going to need a designated powder scale that is capable of reading down to a tenth of a grain. This can either be in the form of a digital scale or as a mechanical balance, whichever you prefer. Digital scale, to me, is the best way to go as it allows faster readings on multiple charges as opposed to throwing set charges or figuring out the individual charge over a period of time. You're also going to need a reliable way to actually throw the powder charge. This can be in the form of either a mechanical powder measure, either mounted to the press or as a standalone on the side, a dipper set such as Lee makes, or just simply some way to throw the powder by hand and trickle up to the desired charge. If you are doing precise loads, as in the case of precision rifle cartridges and stuff like that, you will also need a powder trickler and a scale that is capable of trickling. In this case, this pocket Hornady scale is capable of trickling and works quite well. Before we get into this video, I will say that any and all recommendations for load workup and proper powder safety should be referred back to a reputable reloading manual. There are several online manuals, as well as this modern reloading here by Richard Lee, which I'm going to be referencing today's video. So how do you use a reloading manual to actually begin load development? First, obviously you figure out what cartridge you want to load, and you also figure out what grain projectile and what type of projectile you want to load in that cartridge. In my case, one of the load workups that I've done recently is 45 ACP with a 230 grain high-tech coated Missouri Bullet Company lead round nose. We start by finding the proper cartridge in the load manual data, and then we go to the proper grain weight. See here we're at 155 grain. I'm gonna skip ahead. This page ends on 200 grain. Come over here, 200, 230, but that's a jacketed bullet. We're running a lead bullet. 230 grain lead. Here we go. So this is where we're gonna start. A couple different powders. Um, they have some here on this first page, as well as additional powder listings here on this second page. Depending on what you want to do with the load, certain loadings will give you certain results. Some will be more efficient on powder usage, some will give you higher velocities, potentially at the cost of greater recoil. To start off, we look at the various columns here on the top of the page. On the left, we're going to have the name of the powders listed. A starting grains, this is basically your minimum charge in grains. Volume CCs, this is unique to Lee for the use of their like Lee dippers and stuff. Same with Autodesk, Lee dipper. Those are proprietary to Lee. Velocity in feet per second. This is in their test situation. Let me see if they list it here in this Lee manual. They don't. So some of the other manuals will list the test conditions, i.e. either using a five inch barrel or a six inch barrel. That will give them, when they actually test and proof this load, that will give the, the velocity. So say I was loading go down here, we were gonna load 230 grain lead bullet, and say I was using accurate number seven powder. Our starting charge of 9.9 .9 grains out of their test equipment would give a velocity of 862 feet per second. Now we jump over here onto the right side. Again, accurate number seven, keep them with that column. Our max charge is going to be 11 grains which out of their test stuff is giving 979 feet per second and 19,400 PSI of pressure. Certain cartridges are rating to certain pressures. They kind of give you an indicator here of what powders generate what pressures, just for reference and for helping through load development. It is essential that when you start load development, you start at the starting charge 
and work your way up towards the max. If you don't, and your gun, for instance, say has tighter rifling or a slightly uh, under-spec chamber, you might run into higher pressures than their test equipment gave, and you might reach a max charge quicker than their test equipment did. Always start at the low end, work your way up. Fundamental rule of reloading right there. On the far right column here, we will see the minimum overall length. We'll get into this a little more on seating, but this is basically the minimum length from the head of the case up to the nose of the cartridge. When you're reloading, specifically pistol cartridges, this really comes into play. As you seat that projectile further down into the case, you reduce the available volume for the powder to actually burn and you create pressure sooner and you create more pressure. Again, if you want to see this in more detail, actually read through the reloading manual. Uh, I know at least in this Lee one, he covers that in greater detail. So you never want to be shorter than that minimum overall length right there. There are instances where you can go longer than that, um, especially when you're loading cast. I've often had to go longer than the minimum overall length, but it's just that. It's a minimum, not a maximum. By going longer, if anything, you're dropping pressure. Uh, if you go shorter than that, you're increasing pressure and that could be dangerous. Never do that. So you decide what you decide what powder you want to test with. In our case, let's assume we're just testing with accurate number seven. Our min to max is 9.9 .9 up to 11 grains of powder, as we can see here. What do you do next? I like to take and split the difference between here into five even increments. On each of those five, I will create five test loads per increment in this range. So in this one, let's say we're sitting at 9.9, 9 .9, basically say 10 grains there on the minimum end, up to 11. I would start this at say like 9.9, 10.1, 10.3, 10.5, 10 10.7, and so on, just going by two tenths of grain increments. Then, if you have a chronograph, I would shoot this over chronograph, get your velocity averages, figure out where you want to be on velocity, and then you can go back and check for accuracy around those velocity windows. There's multiple ways of doing this. You can do it the velocity range, or you can do this based off of just purely accuracy. If you don't have a chronograph, that's totally fine. Obviously, you can still work up those good groups and figure out what your particular firearm likes. The other part of this might come into custom tailoring loads to do exactly what you want them to do. In my case, I'm using both CFA pistol and Vitavori's N320 powder, neither of which are actually listed, let me zoom out here, neither of which are actually listed here in the Lee manual. However, there are other data sources that I would encourage you to check out as well. One of them, of course, is Vitavori's website and their app, both of which give load data for a 230 grain lead rad nose bullet in 45 ACP with N320. And then in the case of CFE pistol powder here, Hodgdon has direct data for that as well. Both of them offer published paper load manuals as well as an app version. We will switch over to the app version next. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is open the Vitavori app, go down to the bottom section, select tables, in this case for 45, select handgun, and then scroll down here and pick on the 45 Auto, 45 ACP. This brings up this large list. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is sort this by grain weight. So in our case, we're using a 230 grain. Those are gonna be closer to the bottom. And then you notice manufacturer in the second column and type in the third column. The LOS here are gonna be the lead projectiles and obviously ours is a round nose type. So we go there and then we're gonna find the one that corresponds to N320 powder right there. You see we have a minimum charge, maximum charge of 4.9 and 5.7 grains, giving us an average velocity of 797 on the low end, 925 on the high end. And if you look at the top on the test info, you can see they're using a five inch barrel with a one in 16 twist and large pistol primers. Just checking to verify everything here, given our minimum overall length of 1.220 inches. And that's that. Now comparing it to the Hodgdon data, we're going to be looking up for our CFE pistol powder. 
I have the 2020 edition of the manual, so that's what we opened here, and I know the pistol loads are closer towards the back. There we had 40 cal, 10 mil, 41, 44 mag, should be right in here, 45 gap, there we go, 45 ACP. The bullets here are starting at the, the 118 grade, which is very light, and this page ends on the 180s, so we're going to scroll up here, and there it is, 230 grain lead rat nose. It's exactly what we want. CFA pistol is a couple powders down there on the left hand side, giving us a minimum charge of 5.4 at 816 feet per second and 6.2. Save that there. 6.2 at 942 feet per second. That gives us our charge range so we can complete the load workup. Not all loading manuals will have data for all powders. However, if you look up the powder manufacturer's load data themselves, they will have more options. And up next is the Sierra app. While they don't have load data for lead bullets, they do have some data that will be useful for comparison. So opening the Sierra app here, main page, we scroll down, click on the data section here, go up to the top, obviously this is a pistol cartridge, we'll change that to pistol, go up to the actual cartridge list, scroll down a little bit, there's quite a few options here change that to 45 auto and they have various 45 autos for revolver as well as plus p move over to the details or the data section and scroll down and pick our particular grain weight that we're looking for in this case 230 grain we are using lead so our data is a little bit different but this is kind of a ballpark they give a list of powders here down here at the bottom we see accurate number five that's one i use if you scroll on this little slider bar, you can see min to max charges. The little orange dots indicate the min charge, and the red dots will indicate the max charge. And then it gives you an approximate velocity and a foot-pounds of energy calculation as well. Looks like they also have Vitavori N320 here on the list, although this is data for a jacket and not a lead. Looks like they start at 4.7 grains as a minimum charge. And go up to, let's see, 5.1, it looks like 5.2, 5.3 is the upper max. So a little bit slower than the lead data, possibly due to the, the harder jacketing, getting the rifling, slowing it down slightly, and creating pressure sooner. Once you've determined the load range interval over which you would like to test, the next step is actually charging the cases and testing them on the range. Like I said earlier, you can fill the cases in whatever method you prefer. I prefer to use the Redding number 3BR powder measure, dial that in with its micrometer, and dispense the charges once I verify that they are accurate. If you would like me to go in that procedure, including zeroing out the scale, getting accurate powder charges thrown, or if you have questions about utilizing various types of powder measures from obviously the Redding, the Hornady models, the Dillon models, and some of the others, or the Lees, I forgot about the Lees. If you'd like me to go into those in greater detail, drop a comment down below, let me know. I can always create a second video on those just to go into a little bit better detail and help explain that to you guys. If you have immediate access to a range, say you can shoot in your backyard or something of that nature, I recommend loading up the first five with your starting charge, taking them out and shooting them over the chronograph or at a target, depending on which method you're using. Make sure to pick up the fired brass Check for any signs of high pressure. Again, refer back to a loading manual for more information on that. And then proceed on to the next stage in the load workup until you have found your desired load. If you encounter pressure signs or the load seems too hot or unsafe, stop immediately, pull those bullets, and assess what went wrong or continue the load development process on the lower charge weights. When testing for accuracy, I prefer to test with as much of the human variable removed as possible. Now, ideally, this would be incorporating something such as a ransom rest for pistols or a lead sled for rifles, although that is not always possible, and at least in the case of the ransom rest, it is quite expensive. I typically like to shoot seated off of a bench with a sandbag in the front to rest the pistol on and or a leather piece of cloth or even a microfiber towel in the rear just to pad my hands on to make it a little bit more comfortable. When shooting a rifle, I actually prefer to use a bipod on the front and a sandbag in the rear in a position where I can get comfortable on and get accurate shots. Now that we've got our first loading block of 50 cases primed and expanded, the next step is going to be filling these cases with powder. Now when you do this, a couple of important things you need to remember. First, if you're filling off of a mounted powder measure like this, always keep a consistent pattern 
and after you've filled all the cases, go back over them and look to ensure that all the powder levels are even and that you don't have an accidental double or triple charge. That could be disastrous. Also, it is important to note that when you're doing load workup like this, that all of your loading recipes from your powder charge, your seating depth, your overall length, all of that is in accordance with good reloading practices as laid out in a reloading manual. That is key, go off of your loading data. With that being said, it's now time to charge these cases. Now that all the cases have been charged, I look across the surface row by row to look for any inconsistencies or any of these that might have been mischarged. Those all look good. So now we set that aside where we'll pick it up next week when we talk about bolt seating and crimping. Thanks as always for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button down at the bottom and stay tuned for next week's video on seating and crimping. As always, keep on reloading.